Hello, Mixtresses and Mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video. First one in 2020. So this is going to be um, sort of a different video for me, I guess, a little bit, because I'm basically just going to babble in this video. Um, so it's not going to be, it's going to be related. Ooh, try not to bump the tripod. It's going to be like related to tarot, but not... I'm not going to be showing tarot cards in this video, but essentially I'm going to discuss today um, my death year slash no buy year goals. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to do a little bit of babbling, going to create a Nice 2020 ritualistic space. Set our intentions for all of us, you, me, and everyone to be able to fully realize whatever goals we may set for ourselves this year, now and throughout the year. Or at least find out enough by trying to accomplish our goals to know whether or not we want to continue with them. Because I think that's an important aspect of setting any kind of resolutions for a new year, just in general, is that um, you have to be willing to be flexible because sometimes the goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year aren't necessarily going to work out. Um, so I've decided to um, kind of build in. So first, let me just start with, I'm going to, this is, might be silly, but I'm going to write down my promises to you, to you guys, my viewers. So my promises to you are going to be, um, one, more pick a pile readings. I'm setting kind of a modest goal for that, but I can always do more, but at least one time per month is my general goal for you guys for the year. And, um, my other promise to you guys, um, this one, it may not be of interest to you, but since I am doing a depth slash no buy year, which I will go into a little bit more throughout this video and throughout the year. Um, my other promise to you is um, I'm going to do quarterly updates and possible readjustments again, because like, so basically since I'm doing one today, January 1st, and then I'll have another one on April 1st after three months of doing the depth year. And then another July 1st and another October 1st. Um, yeah, so there's my sloppy handwriting. Um, I don't know why I decided to write, but whatever. I enjoy the sound just from an ASMR standpoint of um, people writing things down. So hopefully some of y'all enjoy that as well. Sorry for the lighting today. Just, I'm losing light like the sun is setting right now. And I still wanted to do this video. So, sorry for the lighting possibly changing throughout this video. Okay, so let me just set this over here. So, for my pick a pile readings, I, I thought about like, should I have them be like, full moon readings, new moon readings. Um, but I think for me, um, I, I'm just going to have to decide what the theme is for the pick up pile readings as we go, because sometimes I'm like literally laying in bed and I'll think of like, like my last pick up pile reading that I just posted yesterday. Um, I just basically thought to myself, I wanted to talk about like reclaiming femininity and healing within the patriarchy. I wanted to talk about that. So it's probably just going to be that kind of thing for the pick a pile readings. It's just going to be kind of at least once a month, hopefully more often than that. 
I will have some sort of theme and maybe sometimes it'll be connected to a new moon or a full moon. Sometimes it'll be connected to a season, um, whatever. But at the very least, I want to have a pick a pile reading for you guys once a month. And I'm going to update you guys on my depth year slash no buy year that I'm starting today, January 1st. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you, this is just kind of a review for myself as well as anything else. So I guess it makes more sense to show. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is my journal. I think it makes more sense. That's how I kind of like free write out my shit. Um, this probably is going to be a better representation of what my actual, I'm going to let you go, guys know my parameters for my depth year slash no buy year. So this is my planner for the year. Um, I've filled it in for the dates of 2020 and it's so beautiful. It's a perpetual planner. So you, um, you can just buy it for any year and then you have to fill in what the dates are going to be and everything. So here are my goals for the depth year. So I'll kind of explain them. Um, these are just my 2020. I always like make a list of my general overall goals for the year. And I usually have, I've been trying to keep it simpler. Like I used to have like 10 or 25 things in a list. Um, cause I always just get like really excited at the beginning of the year. And I try to like, you know, set way too many goals. Like still eight is probably a little much, but you know, so, um, this part, I already told you guys the pick a pile reading. So that's kind of my, my goal for you, for YouTube in general. Um, so then other goals, I have a radio show and a podcast. Uh, well, I technically have two podcasts because my radio show, I turn into podcast episodes for my patrons. So, um, I always have a goal every year to continue my radio show and my podcast. I have a Buffy podcast and then I have my patron podcast that is my radio show put into podcast form my radio show is free and um to anyone that tunes in at the time that it's on which that information is always in my um in the video notes below if you're interested so I always have a goal that even though that's a habit that I have set in place to do every year and it's not a hard one to check off because I'm just in the habit of doing it it still is important to me um, to acknowledge how much work both of those things take because I have a weekly radio show and my podcast is it's linked to because of the nature of the project um, what I do is I um, review and recap every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer exactly 20 years after its original air date so that with that entails sometimes it's weekly sometimes they're like you know summers off or whatever um, so that podcast isn't isn't quite as regular as my radio show, but it still takes a lot of work. And so I like to acknowledge that even though that's an easy thing for me to check off because I'm in the habit of doing it, it's still something that's important to me. Um, walks most days. <laughs> I would really like to have more ambush ambitious health related goals than just that. But um, let's be real. I am a person that me just taking my dogs for a walk once a day is going to be better than my, my normal sedentary lifestyle. So I'm giving myself that goal as, you know, and I also have a treadmill in my house too. So if the weather's terrible and I can't take the dogs out, um, I can at least go for some kind of walk every day. Most days. <laughs> um, I always have like an, an, an amount of books that I want to read in the year. So reading 35 books is my goal this year. I did not get, God, how many books did I read last year? Like 25. So it is going to be a challenge for me to read that many books this year. But I do want to, I do want to do some, like my next goal is to do an internet detox. I want to really improve my habits when it comes to internet addiction in general this year. So that's part of my no buy parameters to do an internet detox as part of that. Cause I really want to spend less time in consumption mode and more time in creation mode. I kind of like put as far as my time management in my life, I kind of categorize everything in creation or consumption. So like sitting around shopping or 
watching TV or something like that would be consumption and like going on walks or journaling or making art or writing or reading all of those things I would consider more creation even though you're not literally creating something while you're reading I consider it more productive use of time and I'd like to pretty much that's my goal every year is to like spend less time doing time wasting things and more time on doing time productive things you know so I, I do want to do an internet detox and what that's going to to consist of is at least two weeks um, of just pretty much no internet like not checking Instagram not watching YouTube not even watching like Netflix and stuff like that um, I just want to like actually spend some time pretending that it's like 1997 again you know and just long enough to really break that constant addiction and maybe remind myself of things that I used to do before the internet was such a huge part of my daily life. So I do want to do that um, probably this month even. So I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to carry that out and what exactly the parameters within that are. Um, so I need to work that out first. So probably like, you know, middle of the month, end of the month, it, or at least in the first couple of months of 2020, I'm going to do the internet detox. Depth year. Um, that's just my overall goal for the year is, and I'm, it's more like a no buy year as far as its literal definition, but we'll get into that here in a second. Um, pick a pile readings I told you guys about. This is a big one. I want to make a tarot tarot or an oracle deck this is not necessarily for anyone else like I'm not going to probably start like a kickstarter and like do something huge like that but I just want to I have a lot of ideas of different things and I just kind of want to get used to figuring out how to implement those ideas so that maybe someday I'll be ready to make a tarot deck that I can offer other people but this year I want to kind of play around with even if I just make like an oracle deck, that's just kind of stuff that I like that I want to use in my readings for myself and others, at least that. Um, and I would like to make a mixtape once a month. And so that is more a promise for my radio show listeners that I want to, because I, I was really sad, like I call myself the mixtress and I was, I have this little notebook that I write down all my mixes in which I actually have right here, so I might as well show you, <laughs> that I write down all of the, the track lists for my mixes. I always put in this little notebook. And so here's the sad thing that I'll show you. So this is my mix that I made for, I made and so, since it was the end of a decade, normally I make like a best of the year mix, but since it was the end of the decade this year, I made a best of the decade mix. And then, so that's, I made it on 12-27-2019. And the last mix that I wrote down in here, 12-27-2018. So the last mix that I made that was, I mean, I make a mix for my radio show every single week, but it's really, it's not necessarily something that I save forever. It's just like, this is what I want to hear right now. It's not like a themed mix or like a mix that I would, something that I would commit to an actual literal mix tape and listen to over and over is what I consider to be a mix for me personally. So um, that I just, I hadn't even realized that it had been an entire year since I made a mix that was worthy enough to write down in my mix journal. So that makes me incredibly sad. <laughs> so I wanted to find a way, and that's kind of linked to, I haven't been listening to a lot of music and I'm a person that um, music is really important to me. So I wanted to make some sort of like concrete parameter that would kind of help me, enable me to be forced to listen to music more often this year. Let's put this over here so you can see it. I love my little Labrador. Right? Um, okay. So those are like my main eight goals of the year and what my depth year parameters are is 
this. Like I'm basically doing a no buy year. Um, the exceptions are I am going to allow myself, um, and people define no buy years in different ways, but for me personally, I am going to allow myself to replace things that I run out of, such as hygiene, makeup, um, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, if I blow holes in most of my socks, I will replace socks. You know, I will replace those things that, you know, like housewares and general items that, um, that break, you know, like if my toaster broke, I would replace it or something like that. So replacements are allowed on my no buy year and experiences. So what I count in experiences are like tattoos, which I actually wrote as a different thing, but because that's something that's very special to me. Like I only get a tattoo like once a year and I save up for it, you know, so that is not something that I consider to be a, you know, an activity that's bad for me. Um, I also, I like to go to the movies to this place that's about an hour from me. And I only do that probably like three to five times a year. And it's an experience and I enjoy it. So I don't want to stop doing that. So experiences for me, a lot of people will choose to on a no buy year, like not go out to restaurants and things like that. But I, I don't make a whole lot of disposable income. So that's not a huge problem for me anyway. Like I can only afford to like go to a restaurant like a few times a month anyway. So I'm not really going to limit experiences on my no buy year. Um, I am allowed to have, so this is my yes, um, category, obviously and this is my no. I'm allowed to have um, as many tarot and oracle decks as I want if I make them because I have an overall limit of 20 tarot decks and 20 oracle decks. But any tarot oracle deck that I make does not count in that 20. So basically what I mean by that is I am limiting myself to overall 20 tarot decks and 20 oracle decks. Um, so what that means, and I'm already there. <laughs> including like pre-orders I'm already at 20 and 20 at the beginning of 2020 <laughs> and so if I decide to if there's a tarot or oracle deck that I really really want there has to be one in my collection that I'm willing to give up in order to make space for it so I am even though I'm doing a no buy year I am allowing myself to bring more tarot and oracle decks into my life if I want them enough to give away something I already have. I don't want to make a huge habit of that just in general, but if, you know, if it's important enough. So that way I'm not going to feel super deprived if I see like the coolest tarot deck I've ever seen. I can definitely make space for that in like one of the decks that maybe I'm not connecting with as much that I own. Um, Marigold guidebook. So the Marigold Tarot, the guidebook is like in production and it's not out yet, but it's one of those things that I'm going to buy as soon as it comes out. So I might as well just factor that into my no buy year because I want that guidebook because it's one of my very favorite tarot decks of all time. Digital music. I am allowed to buy digital music because that's not um, a huge problem for me. Like I only buy a few albums every year and it brings me great joy to own my music. I still do buy um, music that's important to me, even though I still use streaming services as well. But I have an iPod that I keep all of my music on and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So digital music is allowed on my personal no buy year. And then I'm allowing myself if I make it to the halfway point of June, I'm going to allow myself to treat myself to something. Whether, like, as I think about it right now, I think it would probably be something like, there's a certain website, I can't remember what it's called. It's like, it's not Black Moon. Black and the Moon? No. <laughs> Isn't that like tarot? Anyway, whatever. I have it written down somewhere. There's this website that makes jewelry that's like really expensive and I've been like lusting after their jewelry for a long time. And there's this certain moth pendant that I really want that I've wanted for a long time. And it's expensive. But if I make it to June not buying all the things that are in my no list, then I will ostensibly have saved enough money 
to treat myself to something big like a piece of jewelry or if there's something different that I want at that time. So basically I'm just going to treat myself to something in June and have it not be a cheat necessarily. Um, gift cards are fair game. Um, so obviously I'm not going to be like asking people to give me gift cards at random times during the year, but in October, which is my birthday, October 3rd, I almost always get gift cards and in, and at Christmas. So, I mean, by the end of my depth slash no by year, I will receive a few gift cards and I am going to use those when I get them. I'm not going to like wait till 2021 before I use gift cards. Um, tattoos I already said and gifts like basically if someone gives me something you know I'm not going to just completely disregard it because I'm on a no buy year I'm not going to be like tempting people to give me things because that would mess that would not count you know I'm not going to be like hinting to my Michael that you know if you give it to me it doesn't count you know I'm really going to try to resist that temptation but if I just happen to get a gift I'm not going to like say no to it simply because I'm in a no buy year. And of course I'm allowed to, this also encompasses if I'm getting gifts for other people, I am allowed to do that. Hand-me-downs. That's another thing that just happens in my life. Like, you know, some family member will be getting rid of some stuff and I am going to allow myself to accept those items if I think that they're really important um, or th that they would enhance my life in some way, you know. I'm not going to say no to hand-me-downs and gifts. But what is on my no list, it's actually kind of small, but um, I didn't write on here. There's also another yes that goes here that is, you know, it's just personal, so it doesn't really matter to you guys. But um, what is an absolute no for me is buying things on Etsy, eBay, and Amazon. Those are my three big problem areas. I spend a lot of time in my daily life looking for especially tarot and oracle decks on Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. And that is where, that is the biggest reason why I'm doing a no buy slash depth year is because I really want to spend less time focusing on the things I don't have, um, which is what I've spent a lot of time doing. You know, the paradox of choice. It's, it's the reason why all of us do this. It's the reason why a lot of us choose to do depth year slash no buy years. Um, and then I just wrote extraneous crap, which is just any new stuff that isn't food and experience or a replacement item. So I really am going to try to, that's why I'm kind of calling it a no buy year because I really don't want to buy anything this year that isn't a direct replacement an experience or yeah an experience or a replacement essentially I really want to you know do do the things that everybody wants to do when they're doing a depth year which is spend more time with my unread book pile which isn't that big I do have quite a few books on my Kindle um, but my actual physical book pile that I have of books that I've bought and haven't read is, is really small. It's only like four or five books. Um, so I want to spend more time with my unread books. I want to spend more time with, um, the tarot decks that I already have, the Oracle decks I already have, which is a, you know, it's a considerable collection over, I didn't start really acquiring tarot and Oracle decks until 2019, but I now have 20 of each. If you count a few pre-orders that haven't arrived yet. So that's, and I've rehomed a lot of decks throughout the year too. So I've had experience with, you know, a lot of decks in the last year. So it's not like I'm going to be depriving myself, but I just think it's going to help my anxiety and stress levels in general to just decide not to, I mean, already, like it's only January 1st and I already kind of feel like a weight has lifted. It's weird. It's probably just, you know, totally weird psychological adrenaline of it being January 1st, just in general. <laughs> but like, um, I already feel like a sense of relief at like, you know, I don't have to worry about whether or not my current wardrobe is exactly represents who I am. It doesn't matter because it is what it is and it's going to stay where it is, you know? 
Um, I'm not going to be replacing items in my wardrobe because I have a pretty extensive wardrobe as it is, you know, like unless I just like completely don't fit into things anymore, I'm not going to be buying new clothes this year. And so I don't have to think about whether or not I have the right items in my life, you know, um, I'm sure I'll be doing some decluttering because that's something that I do anyway. And I'm assuming that this project is going to kind of inspire me to do that even more than I normally do. Um, but it almost just calms me to know that, like, I'm just not going to be buying things this year. I'm just not going to be. I'm going to be using up the things that I have. And I take great pleasure in, and probably some of this has to do with, like, growing up in a relatively poor family. I mean, we were never starving or anything like that. But, like, and, and my mom was always able to keep the utilities on. So it definitely could have been a lot worse. But we didn't really ever have a lot of like extraneous money and I have a lot of credit card debts and things like that. So I'm hoping to, I haven't set specific goals on that, but I'm hoping to kind of make progress on my debts as well this year because I have like a, it's a dentist thing. I have a dental procedure that's costing a lot of money that I'm going to have to do this year. Um, so I'm, adding some to my credit for that, but that's kind of unavoidable, but I'm hoping to make a little bit of progress on like my credit cards and stuff like that. And especially if I'm not going to be putting new charges onto my credit cards. Um, I do have a list. I guess I could show you that. These are, I made like a list of, these are my 20 tarot decks and 20 Oracle decks that I have, um, right now. So if you're at all interested, um, pause this and like, let me know if there are any of these that you want me to do an unfair comparison, um, of any of the tarot decks. Um, but this is just to keep track of like, I have 20 and 20 at the beginning of the year, which means my deck collection is essentially frozen unless I choose to get something else. And these are the three things that I know of right now that I might be making space for this year. So that is, um, Star Child Tarot, the first edition, is getting reissued. Um, I didn't know about it back then, but it looks like... I did have the, like, Akashic edition of the Star Child Tarot this last year, and it just didn't really work for me, but I think I resonate with the image in the images in the first edition a lot more, so that's something I'm going to be thinking about. Like, I might be making space for that deck when it comes out this year. Also, the Holy Spectrum Tarot is one that's coming out this year, uh, or Tarot of the Holy Spectrum, I think is the full name of it, and it looks really cool. It looks kind of like, kind of like 80s vaporwave, sort of. It's really unique, and I think I'm going, going to want to make space for that one. And the Awakened Soul Oracle the second edition. It's not even available right now, but that's Ethany's Oracle deck. And, um, it's looking like I might want to make space for that as well. Although I'm pretty happy with my Oracle decks. So I'm not sure which one I would be sending out. So I've got time to think about that since the second edition isn't out yet. Um, so I made like a list of the things that I like ordered with Christmas money or the things that I've pre-ordered, the things that are already on their way to me this year. Um, with Christmas money, I bought the that '90s tarot and antique anatomy tarot, so they are they are already counted in this list here. But I haven't actually gotten them in the mail yet. Starseed Oracle is on its way to me right now. Everyday Witch Oracle is on its way to me right now, and again, they're listed over here too, already. And the Nameless One Tarot and Oracle deck is still in production. Like the Kickstarter just ended, so it's still in production, and it will make its way to me sometime in the year whenever it ships out. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this challenge. It's going to definitely be a challenge for me. And if I can succeed in this sort of pseudo no buy slash depth year for me within my own parameters, <laughs> if I can succeed at this, it's going to really improve my life. Um, and it's going to help with my, my anxiety too, because I've really gotten addicted to online shopping. It is definitely a problem. Um, 
And even though I don't end up spending a ton of money, because I don't have a ton of money to spend, um, I still waste a lot of time shopping online. And I'm hoping that me not being allowed to buy extraneous things this year will help me break my addiction to the time that I spend shopping for things, even if I don't actually press purchase. I'm hoping that this will help me out. Um, are any of you guys doing a low buy, no buy, or depth year in 2020? Let me know if you are. Um, I wish you luck um, and happiness and all that good stuff <laughs> and willpower. <laughs> Um, anyway, I just wanted to come on and I'm doing this kind of for me as much as anything. If you're not interested, you can just click past, of course, but um, I will be doing periodic updates about my no buy slash depth year at least four times a year, like I said, um, just because I want to like re-evaluate how it's all going quarterly throughout the year. So um, I'll be back to talk about this again April 1st, if not before then. Thanks, guys. Bye. Happy New Year.